All right, let's wrap things up with some particle motion. Um, this is going to be a pretty much problem-heavy video because particle motion really just is derivatives and integrals in a little bit of context. So the ideas that we need to have are if position is s of t, velocity is v of t, and acceleration is a of t, then s prime is v, s double prime, that looks weird, they made it into the exponent somehow. Anyway, s double prime is the acceleration, which is also v prime. So the derivative of velocity is acceleration, the second derivative of position is acceleration. Uh, we've also got displacement versus total distance traveled. Displacement is the integral from a to b of the velocity function. And then total distance traveled, you just slap some absolute value bars on that velocity function. Um, and that'll give you your total distance traveled. If you have to do this by hand, then you just find where the velocity function hits zero and break up the integral based on that. Make every integral positive, even if you get a negative value. All right, for time t greater than zero, uh, the velocity of a particle moving along the x-axis is given by v of t equals t minus five, t minus two quantity squared. At what values of t is the acceleration of the particle equal to zero, okay? I need to find when the acceleration is zero from the velocity. It means I need to find when the derivative is zero. So I'm going to take the derivative. I've got a function times a function. I'm going to use product rule. Derivative of the first times the second plus the derivative of the second, which is a little bit of chain rule, times the first. And I'm going to distribute all this. I get t squared minus 4t plus 4 plus t squared, 2t squared, minus 14t, plus 20. That becomes 3t squared, minus 18t, plus 24, and that's what I need to equal 0. Now factor out of 3, I've got t squared minus 6t, plus 8 equals 0. Factor that to t minus 2 t minus 4, and apparently the answer is going to be 2 and 4. So I just had, to, all, all I really needed to know was that acceleration is the derivative of velocity. After that, it was just a normal old calculus question. A race car is traveling on a straight track at a velocity of 80 meters per second when the brakes are applied at time t equals 0 seconds. From time t equals 0 to the moment the race car stops, the acceleration of the race car is given by a of t equals negative 6 t squared minus t meters per second per second. During this time period, how far does the race car travel? Okay, so I need to eventually integrate velocity, right? But as of this moment, I don't have a velocity function. So what I need to do is I need to take the antiderivative of acceleration. And that's going to be the antiderivative of negative 6t squared, which would be negative 2t cubed minus t squared over 2 plus c. Well, so that's my velocity function. I just need to find out what c is. This should be cubed. Well, it does say at t equals 0 seconds, the velocity is 80. So that would send the first thing to 0, the second thing to 0. And apparently, 80 is equal to c. Let me rewrite that. So c is equal to 80 based on that. So now what I need to do is integrate the velocity function from 0 until the moment the race car stops. When is that? Well, that would mean the velocity is 0. Oh my goodness. So that would mean the velocity is 0. I need to find the value of t that does that. This is a very, very deep question, apparently. So what I'm going to do is negative 2t cubed plus t squared over 2 plus 80, because remember we found that c was 80 equals 0. I'm going to go into my calculator. I'm going to graph that and find when that happens. Okay, so from graphing it, which I just I realized while I was doing that, I wrote this wrong. This should have been minus t squared over 2. 
from graphing that, I find that t equals 3.33862. Um, so then what I need to do now is I need to integrate from zero to that time the, origin, the velocity function that we've got. So I'm just going to write right here, it's zero to 3.33862. The velocity function and that ends up giving you 198.766 looks like that would be B so this is definitely a deep question first you had to find the velocity function then you had to find when the velocity function was zero then you had to integrate the velocity function from zero to that time so there's a lot going on this is a pretty deep multiple choice question honestly if I saw this question this would be like coming back to you later if there's time because th there's a lot going on it's it's going to take you a lot of time to get through this kind of a problem okay let's see another one a uh, particle moves along the x-axis with its position at time t given by x of t equals t minus a t minus b where a and b are constants and a is not equal b for which of the following values of t is the particle at rest okay so particle is at rest when the velocity is zero so i need to find the derivative because velocity is the derivative position so v of t, just, you could either distribute this or you could use product rule. I'm going to use product rule just so we see more practice of it. Derivative of the first is 1 times t minus b plus the derivative of the second is 1 times t minus a. Okay, now I want this to be 0, right? Because I want it to be at rest. So 0 equals t minus b plus t minus a. So 0 equals 2t minus b minus a. Now I'm solving for t, so if I move the b and the a over, that's going to put me in the right direction. But apparently t is equal to a plus b over 2. Okay. Uh, for t greater than or equal to 0, the position of a particle moving along the x-axis is given by x of t equals sine of t minus cosine of t. What is the acceleration of the particle at the point where the velocity is first equal zero? Okay, so I need to find the velocity and set it equal to zero. Whatever t value that is, plug it into the acceleration. So v of t, derivative of sine is cosine. Derivative of negative cosine is positive sine. So I need this to equal zero. So negative cosine of t equals sine of t. Now this is a unit circle idea. The first time that cosine and sine are the same except negative is going to be 3 pi over 4. Okay, so now I need to find the acceleration function and plug that in. The derivative of cosine is negative sine. Derivative of sine is cosine. So then a of 3 pi over 4 is negative sine of 3 pi fourths plus cosine of 3 pi fourths. Well, I'm going to finish that right up here just because I ran out of room. I'll change color so you can see the difference. Uh, negative sine of 3 pi fourths is negative root 2 over 2. And then cosine of 3 pi fourths is also negative root 2 over 2. So that's just negative root 2. So A. I always feel really awkward in these videos. I don't know why I'm saying this. I'm talking to no one. But I always feel awkward after I finish a problem because I can't like see if anybody has questions because you're watching a video. And now this is awkward. A uh, particle moves along the line so that its acceleration is given by a of t equals b. If the particle's velocity at t equals 0 is 5, what is the velocity of the particle at t equals 3? Okay, I need to go from acceleration to velocity. So I'm going to do an integral. Well, the t values that I know about are 0 and 3. Okay, well, that's going to give me the change in velocity. I want the actual velocity. So I need to add the initial condition. Okay, so now I put that in the calculator and I get 11.710. Easy as pi. Uh, 
Uh, four, zero, less than equal t, less than equal 12, a particle moves along the x-axis, the velocity of the particle at time t is given by v of t equals cosine of pi, pi sixth t. Particles at position x equals negative two at time t equals zero. For zero to t to 12, when is the particle moving to the left? Okay, particle would be moving to the left when the velocity is negative. So first I need to consider when the velocity would be equal to zero. Um, actually, I don't really like doing it that way. Let's just think about it. On the unit circle, where is cosine negative? Well, in quadrants two and three. So from pi halves to three pi halves. So whenever the argument of cosine, which is pi six t, is between three pi halves and pi halves, then this should be, this velocity function will be negative. All I gotta do is get rid of the pi six, so I multiply everything by six over pi. Okay, over here the pi's cancel. And I'm left with three, less than equal t, less than equal, okay, pi's cancel again. This is three times six is 18 over two is nine. There we go. Particles moving to the left when t is between three and nine. Uh, for zero to 12, a particle moves along the x-axis. Okay, same situation. Write but do not evaluate an integral expression that gives the total distance traveled by the particle from time t equals zero to t equals six. Well, remember, that's just the integral of the absolute value of velocity. From zero to six. That's it, that's all you have to do. It, it was literally that easy. Uh, find the acceleration of the particle at time t uh, is the speed of the particle increasing, decreasing, or neither at time t equals 4. Okay, first let's find the acceleration, then we'll deal with the next question. Uh, acceleration at time t. Remember, acceleration is the derivative of velocity, so derivative of cosine is negative sine. Times the derivative of the inside. So that's it, that's the acceleration function. Now it says, is the speed of the particle increasing, decreasing, or neither at time t equals four? Well, if the part of speed of the particle is increasing, that means the sine of the velocity and acceleration match. Decreasing if the sine of the velocity and acceleration match. Neither if the acceleration is zero. So what I'm gonna do first is check to see if the acceleration is zero because then I don't have to check the velocity. So a of four is negative pi sixth times four pi six is two pi thirds, not times. That was silly. Okay, sine of two pi thirds, that's root three over two times negative pi six. So negative pi root three over 12. Okay, so it's not zero. That means I need to check the velocity. Velocity of four is cosine of two pi thirds, which is equal to negative one half. Okay, so I see the sign of the acceleration velocity match. That means this particle's speed is increasing. Increasing because a of four and v of four match sign. That's my justification. Hooray! Okay, last problem. For zero to 12, a particle moves along the x-axis, the velocity of the particle at time t. Oh, why am I reading this? This is the same thing we keep doing. Find the position of the particle at time t equals four. Okay, I need to go from velocity to position. Remember, if I integrate velocity, that just gives me displacement, so I have to take the initial condition into account. So I'm going to do negative two plus the integral from zero to four of the velocity function. I know what you're thinking. Oh, this is a calculator question. That'll be so easy. It's not, it's not a calculator question. This really just is that annoying. You're gonna have to use a U-sub, but the U-sub isn't that bad. It looks way worse than it actually is. So let me zoom in. I'm going to use a U-sub here. Uh, my U is going to be pi six t. 
du is pi six. I don't have a pi sixth, so I'm just gonna move that over by multiplying both sides by six over pi. So I've got six over pi du equals dt. So then this becomes negative two plus the integral uh, cosine of u times six over pi du. Okay, I gotta change my bounds now though, right? Because the zero and the four are x values. I'm talking about u's now, or they're t values. So when t is zero, u is, well, it's still zero. I'm just plugging into this right here. Okay, that's still gonna be zero. When t is four, u is two pi thirds. So again, just plugging into that u formula. Now I just need to take this negative two plus six over pi. The antiderivative of cosine is sine. And I'm going from zero to two pi thirds. Sine of two pi thirds we know is square root of three over two. And then sine of zero is zero, so I don't even need to worry about it. And as nasty as it looks, that is in fact my answer. Okay, again, wraps up the AB material, not exhaustive, just went through a lot of things that I think are relevant. So if you've made it through all of this, you've made it through about 120 minutes of calculus, very proud of you. Try and find some stuff that I didn't manage to cover. I, I, was, I think I did a pretty good job at finding a lot of varied problems though. Um, I used a lot of those CED and those 2012 problems that we have released. So I, I think that we've got a good set under our belts and we've seen a lot of different concepts through these videos. If there's anything else you want to see, of course, ask me in class or email me, something like that. Um, BC material, watch out. I'll be making those tomorrow evening and I'll post those as soon as I can. Good luck on your exam, guys.